Ladies and gentlemen, one of our great Filipino culinary ambassadors and a chef that is well respected within his own community but also outside of his own culinary community as well for what he does to bring us the taste of the Philippines, the executive chef of Hilton, Abu Dhabi, Yas Island, Chef John Benavatura. Hello. Oh, it's here. Uh, good morning, everybody. Mabuhay. Mabuhay. Magandang umaga in, in, in Tagalog. Good morning. Um, before I start, uh, I just want to give you a bit of a brief story what I did last month. So I've been away from the Philippines for more than 14 years already. Um, Dubai has been home to me. UAE has been home to me. The Guild has been in the home to me. Um, so I took an, a culinary immersion trip back in the Philippines. I went to Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao to actually eat a lot. And I tried to rest on the beach a little bit, but that didn't work because it was too <laughs> hectic. But I want to show you what happened, uh, how we culminated the whole trip. So I think Lynn could play the video uh, with what we did. I think the big question is, where is the adobo, and where is the balut, and where is the chicken in a sal? So my, um, let me get the clicker, I think it's here. So my, my thought process, this is the first time I'm going to use this. My thought process for the, for the food is more about tasting the Philippines. I don't want, I'm not going to make... 
adobo today. I'm not going to make chicken and sal. I'm not going to make sinigang. Um, there's already a lot of great Filipino chefs who's doing that. The way I see it is I think I need to focus more on the product and the substance so that you could use it in your kitchens and show you how to use it in maybe you could bring it in, in your cuisine. So the, the focus right now is Taste the Philippines. I'm just going to give you a bit of a beautiful picture of my country, which I so love. Uh, I think everybody wants to be in that part of the island here. Um, Las Islas Filipinas. Um, Philippines. The Philippines is divided into three parts, Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao. Luzon is more on the upper part, and which is the, this is a very famous Banara Rice Terraces. We have Visayas, which is Bohol, uh, a little bit of the scenery so you guys can see. And of course, Mindanao, which is for me, I fell in love with Mindanao. This is the first time I went to Mindanao, specifically Bukidnon. Uh, it's a very rich area that you could actually see. I would really suggest you guys to visit it. I'm going to be showing you two, two dishes today. Uh, I think the two dishes that I'm going to be showing to you is the cuisine before we were colonized or before other people went or other races went to the country. So two things. It's called kinilau and tinapa. Kinilau is our version. So kinilau, kinilau. I'm, I'm making red snapper kinilau. It's our version of ceviche. Now the difference of Kilau and ceviche. Ceviche is highly extracted from vegetable and fruit. Kilauin has a vinegar component, and we've been doing vinegars since, since God knows when. Um, in our country, we like preserving uh, all the food, right? So I'm going to show you how to do it. So today, we're going to be making a red snapper kinilau with basically vinegar and a little bit of calamansi. Of course, I'm, I need to show you a picture of a red snapper. I'm pretty sure everybody knows what a red snapper is. We call it Maya Maya in my country. And I'm very interested to show you this. This is called Tabon Tabon. Now, I just recently um, discovered this. Well, I'm a, I wasn't the one who discovered it, but I think we could pass this around to, to everybody to, to see. This is very interesting. Um, if you taste it on its own, it doesn't taste anything. It has an astringent mouth feel. And, but once you mix this with vinegar, it gives a bit of antibacterial component to your vinegar, which makes your ceviche better, um, safer to eat, so to speak, right? So this is something that I think is very original from the Philippines. Another component, of course, spiced vinegar, um, which is very popular in my country. We like making vinegars. We like putting a lot of stuff in the vinegar. Um, we have, uh, this is one of the brands that's very popular in the Philippines that they say you can dip anything in, in Punakurat. Um, and of course, the Philippine lime calamansi. Now, we got so excited, we bought all the limes in Abu Dhabi and apparently it's sold out. So we squeezed all the limes, so it's all here. All the calamansi in Abu Dhabi is right here with us. Um, the next thing is, is the, the, what do you call this, the, the tinapa. Okay, so I want to talk about the, the yellowfin tuna. Now, tinapa is, is a method that we've been using back in, in my country to preserve food. Uh, we, we do not, back in the day, we really do not have, our climate is very warm. So food uh, can get spoiled very fast. So we find ways on how to preserve it and how to make sure that we, we have food for the next day or next couple of weeks. So this is tinapa. Now, but what I'm doing, I'm going to do a light tinapa with, uh, with yellowfin tuna, which is from the Philippines. Um, one of my favorite fishes, yellowfin tuna. Now, I want to tell you a bit of a uh, story about yellowfin tuna. Um, a lot of times we, we catch yellowfin tuna that's still too small. Uh, World Wildlife Foundation says it needs to be at least 20 kilos for you to fish it. Always remember that the yellowfin tuna is not your albacore tuna that grows like 2 to 3 kgs or 5 kgs at the max. Yellowfin tuna, the big ones, uh, we do sustainable fishing in the Philippines and there's always one person doing the fishing for that. So it takes a couple of hours to reel that 20 kilo tuna in. So when I give you a taste of the tuna later, please appreciate it because there's one guy in the Philippines who caught that for you today. <laughs> so um, you need to make sure that you enjoy it. A bit of uh, everybody's, uh, I think uh, obviously everybody's chef, but for those who are not chefs, there's, there's the three major kinds of tuna that we have. We have the bluefin, we have the yellowfin and the albacore. I think here in, in the UAE, we have, we have a lot of albacore tuna. 
Sometimes people get confused between the yellow fin and the albacore tuna, but the main difference is, is the dorsal fin. The dorsal, the dorsal fin is the one on the side of the fish. The albacore tuna reaches up to the second um, pectoral fin of the tuna. The yellow fin usually is a big one. It has a very long uh, tail in the back, and it's yellow. Yeah? Bluefin tuna is bluefin tuna, uh, highly overfished, very expensive, so switch to yellowfin tuna. <laughs> sustainable fishing, yeah, sustainable fishing. All right, um, with the yellowfin tuna, we will be cooking it with adlai. Now, is anybody familiar with adlai uh, here in the UAE? No, no, adlai? Adlai is, is also called uh, job steers in English. Now, adlai is um, it's like, it's a type of millet. It's like, it's like your barley. Now, before, people don't use to eat adlai because it's very hard. So what they do, sometimes they actually make it into beads. They make it into beads as ornaments, as rosary, as the one they use for prayer. Um, then there's another kind that you can actually cook. And later, you're going you're gonna to taste it. The good thing about adlai, this is very healthy. It's considered a superfood because it's very low in glycemic index. So it's very good for diabetics. So instead of eating rice, uh, eat adlai. Another part is alige. Now, this is one of the most uh, interesting ingredients that I really like to work with. Um, 2007, when I, when I first joined the Culinary Guild and I went for a competition, I used alige. And it was difficult for me to convince everybody what alige was at that time. Um, but these crabs are called hairy crabs. They're very small. Low in meat, high in fat. So we cultivate this in the Philippines in Pampanga. Uh, we have one here today, so at least you guys can try it as well. And we will, we're going to culminate the dish, and uh, we're going to give you guys uh, a try of it. So also, moringa, I think everybody knows this. Drumstick leaves, moringa is very healthy for you, uh, very good for pregnant women. So yeah, I think we should uh, start with the cooking. Please feel free to ask anything. I'm a bit scared because everybody's quiet. I don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing. But I guarantee you're going to taste whatever we're going to cook today. And uh, I'm sure that you're going to love it. So please ask, feel free and ask around. Maybe Chef Andy has some oh, questions. I can, I'll, I'll. I can give them a muse, Chef. <laughs> All right. We can start. Tales of good food in the Philippines. Let's bring out the sandwich. <laughs> So for the ceviche, so what, what I do usually for the ceviche, I usually mix it with two kinds of vinegar. So we have the coconut sap and the cane vinegar, right? I'm not promoting any specific brand. I'm just telling you that there's a lot of kinds of vinegar. But we do, I specifically use mine for the cane one and also the coconut sap. I usually mix it. So it's 50-50 of each, right? I'm going to put Jay and Fernando on the spot here. I can hold it for you if you want, said the actress to the bishop. But, uh, okay. um, Jay, yes, sir. what do you do in the Philippines? What do I do? <laughs> um, I'm, um, I have uh, restaurants in the Philippines, and um, I'm part of our Chef's Association, LTB Philippine Chef's Association. How about you, Andy? What do you do in the Philippines? I eat. <laughs> That's all I do. I can see. We can there's, see. There's three Filipino phrases I, I know. I don't know any bad words in the Philippines. Yeah? My mother-in-law forbid my brother-in-law or in-laws not to teach me bad words. So there's three phrases I know in, in, in Tagalog. Kaina tayo. Okay. Let's eat. Okay. Awina tayo. Let's go home. And walang pera. Never say that. <laughs> Never say that. And the most recent one is Pera or Bayong. Oh. Ah, okay, okay. That's the only, the, only, the only Tagalog I know. That's all you need. That's all you need. That's all you need. Now, it's good to have you uh, yeah. guys here. And uh, what, what's the biggest change you've seen in the, uh, in, the, in the Philippines over the last, like, 15 years between the two of you? Oh, Fernando will answer that. No. <laughs> I, I am Fernando. I'm a, a part of the LTB uh, Philippine Chefs Association as well. Oh, hi, guys. And I'm always a chef judge here at the ECG Salon Culinary, so I'm happy to be here, always.
Thank you. So um, I think in the last 15 years, we have really opened up as a, a culinary capital, uh, apart from international chains thriving and, and opening up. It's more Filipinos now. The younger generation has started to come in. I say younger because we're not that anymore. Um, as well as um, the interest in traveling has opened up the Philippines and its culture to um, all of your cultures. Filipinos have begun to travel and have come back. They've studied abroad and they've started coming back, bringing in all these ideas of cross-cultural uh, collaboration. And um, I think it's, it's going to be even better in the next two years as we break out of the pandemic lockdowns that we were uh, suffering through the last two years. Um, and uh, being here in Dubai and seeing someone like John Buenaventura up there cooking the cuisine that uh, me and Jay have just as you know, loved as much as he, as he does and that we promote heavily through our organization. Um, we look forward to a bright, um, delicious future for Filipino food, not only in the Philippines, but all over the world. So, Thank yeah. you, gentlemen. Oh. All right. Thank you, Andy. So just, just, just to cut, just to Thanks, cut you guys, uh, I just mixed up every, I just want to tell you what, what I did quickly. So I did 50-50 uh, of these uh, vinegars. I have calamansi extract. Uh, unfortunately, I cannot show you how the calamansi is, but you can easily buy calamansi in West Zone or any uh, Filipino shops in, in Abu Dhabi or in Dubai. I have the calamansi. I have some ginger, grated ginger, some onions, a little bit of lemongrass, and some kaffir lime leaves just for the smell. Yeah? And some, some chilies. And I'm just plating it all up together. And then we're going to start uh, after that with the tuna. I think some of the guys already tried the Sorry? ceviche in the front. Uh, how was it? Uh. Chef Uwe loved it. Two thumbs up, Chef Uwe. Thank you very much. Welcome to the Philippines. <laughs> we can start with this. Yeah, yeah. Sure. The tuna. Uh, start to torch this so we can start to do the tuna after. And then see this one. I was also lucky enough to go many, many years ago to a uh, culinary school at the fort, the aubergine, which was run by the ex-pastry chef of the Mandarin and the chef of the Shangri-La, I think it was. And they started a culinary school training uh, not only uh, in culinary but also in service and that was like oh, 15 maybe 18 years ago and they made everything it was all very classical European style they baked bread they made foie gras you know it was that very classical training but the front of house was also done and about four years ago I uh, on the Instagram as we young people do yeah I found a restaurant called Toyo and I saw this restaurant, I said, we've got to go. And so we went, we, we booked a table of four, turned up with six and said, no, you can have four. <laughs> and you can sit upstairs on a shared table, which was absolutely f phenomenal. The chef, I believe, had just come back from Denmark where he'd been working with uh, Noma. And I took my mother-in-law. And, uh, of course, uh, we had this incredible meal. But the waiter, and his name was John as well, he could describe every dish. And then I said, where did you learn such great skills as a waiter? And he'd been to the aubergine school. Yeah. But that combination of modern Filipino food plus the waiter's experience was a to-die-for experience. And I remember him explaining one of the dishes to my mother-in-law. And he said, Nanai, what do you think it is? And a little like a bowl of cream caramel, yeah? And I'm looking, and he, as he started to talk about the ingredients, he said, there's chicken, and there's ginger, and then there's uh, marrow, and, and it was set, yeah? So it was a set custard. Is it warm and then my mother was looking at him like he's mad, and then I said, oh, it's tonola. And he said, exactly. 
So they, they reinvented one of the very traditional house dishes in, into this beautiful custard. Yeah. And then he brought out, I don't know what you call them, they're sea ferns or something. They're, 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 they're something from the sea. Yeah, that glow. Take a photo it's, of it's not a seaweed, but it's like a fern. And then my mother-in-law said, I hope he's not charging us a lot for this because this is the cheapest vegetable in the market. <laughs> So it was great to see that that restaurant was developing a cuisine of such high standards, yeah, with great technique, but like John's doing here, authentic to the ingredients and, of the, and the indigenous uh, cuisine as well. Sorry, we're stealing all your show, John. What are you doing? Well, I'm just... Uh, I'll turn just myself off. This so this is the finished product of the, of the ceviche, right? It's very straightforward. It's very easy. It's very similar to your tiradito. We don't marinate the fish for a very long time. We want it super, um, we want just the vinegar to touch the fish so you still uh, feel and taste the freshness of the dish, yeah? Now we're starting off with your tuna. Now what we did with the tuna, just to show you. So I've cured this in salt and sugar, 50-50, for one hour. Um, why I did that, I want the, the meat to be a bit firm and I want it to be really intact. Now we've rolled it up and then we've smoked it. So this is where the tinapa aspect comes in. After we've smoked it, now we're going to sear it, which is Chetan is doing. Chetan, relax. Don't worry. I know this is just the World Chef's Congress. Don't worry. Breathe. You can breathe. You can breathe. Don't worry. No pressure. You can sear it. Uh, Don't Chetan burn it. Okay. It's fine. Just take it. Yeah, sear it. Don't worry. You're a very good uh, chef. <laughs> So he's going to see it. And what we're going to do, we're just going to plate it up. And then we're going to serve it to you with this aligue. Remember the crab fat that I was telling you guys about? Is the camera here? Is the camera? Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. So crab fat. So tabanang talangka. Um, very good for your taste buds. Very bad for your cholesterol. But it's very tasty. So eat it in a very, very um, conservative way. But what we did was we've increased the cholesterol in it, so we made uh, hollandaise sauce and we've infused it in hollandaise sauce. So this makes things better. Um, I think it matches well with the very lean tuna that we're, what we're giving you. And uh, we're going to give you guys a uh, of us. It's okay, Chilam. You can start. Yeah. Now, on this side, as you can see, the adlai. Now, the adlai... What we did was we've just, uh, we cooked it similar to risotto, right? So the good thing about adlai, you can use it like a paella. I've cooked with it and tried to make a paella out of it. We're not making paella. Uh, maybe someone would say, no, that's not what you use for paella. Just being, being clear. Um, this is adlai. So what we did was it, it's, it can absorb a lot of moisture, right? So you can, you can really play around with it. It's very stable. We can also cook it as a sort of like a similar to risotto. So what we did was we cooked it in a bit of fish stock and we added coconut milk on it. So we're going to serve the adlai with the tuna and a little bit of the alige sauce. Yeah. Yeah, have your How much of this cuisine do you uh, deliver at the Hilton on the, at the, on the uh, Yas Island, mate? We're getting there. We're getting there. What's the biggest challenge in getting it on the menu? I think I think it's more of um, I, I think awareness, right? That's why it's uh, that's why my, my my battle cry is more than cooking Filipino food or Filipino cuisine. I would really want to focus more on on the product and then eventually introduce them to the cuisine. Um, I think people just needs to be a bit more aware of what we offer in my country and how good the produce is. Um, then we can really de uh, deep dive into the offerings that we, we have. Where's your moringa? And this is the moringa. What we did, sorry, what we did with, with the moringa, we just fried it. Um, I like a little bit of texture in my, my plate. Yeah, you're going to have a taste of this as well. So this is something that you guys can see. And Suraj will, Suraj will layer out the plates. Then we can start to put with the ad life, right? Yeah. Thank you very much. Um. Hmm. Any questions so far? I feel a bit uh, that uh, something is... Some questions? Yes. 
Oh, they're listening to me. Okay, that's a good thing. <laughs> Thank you, Chef Uwe. <laughs> Put it already. Start the I think you uh, really hit the nail on the head. Expose the people to the ingredients and then slowly wean them onto the flavours. Luckily, you didn't bring balot. I think that one may have uh, surprised a few too many of them. Talking about sustainability and uh, my brother-in-law thinks I'm mad because when, I, when we build our little place down where my, where my mother-in-law and father-in-law live and have lived for many, many years down in... Yeah, in a minute. Um, so when I uh, built a little house for us, I said, right, we have to be a bit sustainable. Bring it all here. So I said, we'll have a rubbish Spicy. bin for plastic and a rubbish bin for mixed recyclables. And then I said, we'll have a rubbish bin for food waste. And my brother-in-law looked at me as if I was mad. And he said, what do you mean food waste? He said, there's never any waste. And I never really taken it seriously when I was there to look at what happens in the family home. There is no food waste. Nothing is wasted. Absolutely zero is wasted from food. Yeah. The final leftovers, if there is anything left over, which is normally bones, goes to the dogs. Yeah? I mean, at the end of the day, you know? So there's nothing that is not eaten in the house and nothing that actually goes anywhere to make compost or anything. Yeah? There's a young lady here with a question. Chef John. Yes. How do we cook the tabon tabon? Like, what does it look oh, yeah, like sorry. when you yeah, open it? Uh, my, uh, uh, my apologies. <laughs> so the tabon tabon is actually, it's a fruit of a tree, right? So what, what I did was I just used a microplane and I just grated it and squeezed the juice out of it. I wouldn't recommend that you eat the, the fruit itself because it, it's very gritty. It's yeah. very, uh, it has a, a wood, wood texture to it. So you just extract the flavor. That's the way to do it. Thank you. And also the adlai, does it break down or do you have to mix it with something else to make it creamy? Well, we've added coconut milk on it, um, and, but we cooked it first with fish stock and then coconut milk. So okay. we just made it a bit more creamy. So you have to so. stew it for a while. It takes a while. It takes a while to cook the adlai. It takes a bit of time. Uh, let me pass the Thank adlai. you, Chef. Thanks. As John passes out the last of the dishes, ladies and gentlemen... Yeah, I think All done? Good to go. I think so. I mean, uh, ho I, hope, I hope I've shared a bit of uh, information about the Philippines. Uh, and thank you very much for listening. I hope it didn't bore you. Um, thank you for, for giving. Thank you, Andy and the Guild. Thank you, Chef.